nature, the most powerful creative force on Earth. I'm Chef Melissa King. Cooking has taken me to incredible places. Magical. <laughs> From TV competitions and celebrity galas to countries around the world. I'm heading out to places I've never been before to seek out new experiences and to create new dishes inspired by nature. Wow, this is amazing. I'm teaming up with some of the world's greatest explorers to go further than I've ever gone before. This is insane. Stunning. To push my craft, creativity, and my cooking. This is Tasting Wild. We are here just outside of Port Angeles, Washington, on the northern coast of the Olympic Peninsula. This place is a really picturesque area. There's an incredible forest that hits this dramatic ocean coastline. I'm here to meet Anand Varma, who shoots incredible photos of nature. His photography and work really shows details that I've never seen before. I'm meeting him at an apiary, a bee farm that I heard produces an extremely unique honey. Hello. Hey, Anand. So nice to meet you, Melissa. How are you? Doing great, doing great. Have you yeah, ever worn a bee suit before? I have not. <laughs> All right. This is first. I All right. always wanted to do this. Yeah, this is going to be your suit. Let's Thank get suited you. up and check out what's going on here. Cool. One of the early stories I, I worked on for National Geographic was on honeybees. And I actually kept a, a beehive in my backyard, and that mm -hmm. let me kind of study their lives. You get up close, and you take the time to pay attention, and you realize how much beauty and complexity is all around us everywhere you look. Have you ever looked inside a beehive before? No, first time. I've been to apiaries, but first time being able to like get up close. I'm curious of the flavor profile. I love honey. I cook with honey all the time. Uh -huh. But to be able to like get up close and personal, I'm excited. Can't wait to taste this honey. I've heard great things about this. Yeah. I haven't tried it yet. Hi. Hi. Hello, this is Dan and Judy Harvey. We've been here mm -hmm. since 1985. And when you have healthy bees in the right weather conditions, they make a lot of honey. So are you ready for this, Melissa? Yeah, I'm super excited. So one of the really cool things about this area is this native plant called fireweed. And so what Dan and Judy have done is set up their hives so that the bees are almost exclusively collecting the nectar and pollen from this one kind of plant. This native plant, fireweed, doesn't have a lot of pesticides or herbicides sprayed on it. So that means that the honey is super clean, it's super pure, and it's all coming from a single flower. So it has a unique flavor profile. Wow. That's what I'm curious about, is the flavor notes of the fireweed and what makes it unique and special. I can tell from Melissa's work, she is somebody who pays really close attention to her craft. And so as somebody who's that tuned in, I'm really curious what kinds of things she'll pick up on here. So if you'd like to see a queen, this is going to be the quickest way to see it. The king needs to meet her queen. <laughs> Each box is a different queen. Each box is a different queen. You can see the pollen. That's all pollen right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the honey, the nectar. And the pollen's all one color, and you can tell that they're yeah. just. Mm -hmm. Can you flip it over and just set it here? I'd love to take a picture of some Oh, that's of these a great things. idea. When I decided to become a photographer, Macro photography became my specialty. Nature is kind of the ultimate inspiration to keep exploring and to keep discovering new details. It's so surprising when you get up close to a honeybee, especially its face, you realize they're, they're like covered in fur. There's hairs coming out of their eyeballs. You learn to appreciate them in a whole new way. Honey comes in a wide range of flavors. You can really use it from savory dishes to sweet dishes. It's almost like wine. There's so many different nuances that you can get from a single honey. This is incredible. Love seeing all the bees on here and what they're doing. Let's go taste some honey. OK, let's go. That was so cool. That was amazing. I think there's something really unique about fireweed honey. Oh, wow. I dipped my finger in there. It's so good. Yeah, it's very light. but also very clean tasting. It's so delicate in flavor profile. 
We thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure. It's always exciting to have somebody come who's interested enough to want to know more details. Well, we'll see you hopefully again. All right. Thank thanks you. so much. Yeah. That bee farm was incredible. Yeah, I think what they're doing is really cool. Leaving the apiary, Anand tells me we're going to investigate a tide pool. It's one of my favorite things to do. I've tide pooled around the coast of California and up through Oregon, but never this far north. I love seafood so much. It's one of my favorite ingredients to work with. And I'm just excited to explore this area and see if there's mussels or barnacles, maybe even clams that we can find. I can't wait to show you what's in there. There's this island. It's surrounded by tide pools. Tons of cool little stuff in those pools. I've seen some of your work, and I've seen beads of water you know, spraying off of a hummingbird, which is just incredible to be able to capture that type of detail. So what got you into macro photography? I think it was just what I did as a kid. I would like head out the back door in my childhood home in Atlanta, and I'd head down to the creek in my backyard. And you know, it was like every time you, you pull up a rock or, or turn over a log, there'd be some weird little bug or snake or, or salamander. And somewhere along the way, I fell in love with exploring the natural world. And I found out that photography could be this way of sharing my discoveries with other people. Every time I've ever been tide pooling, I see a creature I've never seen in my life. That's one of the rewards of paying close attention. You spend the time to look at something carefully, and you get to discover something new, and it motivates you to keep going. So we are in a pretty special spot where the tide has pulled out, and it's going to allow us to explore a lot more than what we'd be able to see any other time of day. I'm hoping to really tie in all the ingredients that we find in this tide pool into a dish. This is insane. Stunning. Yeah. All right, so I think we got to pick our way down this kind of cliff here. We're making our way down these rocks, and I see mussels and barnacles, starfish. Wow, look at all the seaweed. Yeah. Look at this, kombu. Have you ever yeah. harvested your own? Absolutely, yeah. You can dry all this and use it for any sort of applications, from broths to soups. Oh, cool. There's so much life here to explore. You see a rock covered in mussels, and then you get down to one of those mussels, and it's covered in limpets. And like that limpet has its own algae, and there's just these, you know, levels upon levels of detail and life and biodiversity. And that's what makes uh, tide pool so special. Wow, this is so cool. Whoa. Right? Like, what is that? They're just peeking out. Look at how much it's moving. Like a it's... dinosaur. That's wild. You can kind of see there's a big rock in oh, the cave. Yeah, right if we aim for the left side of that, I think that's going to be. Tide's coming in already. Yeah. It was fast. If we start turning rocks here, I think there's some cool stuff to find. Yeah? It's like a starfish, like a baby, baby starfish. Oh, oh wow. my god. I have never seen this what before. What is that? Wow. There's so many colors and creatures here to explore, and it's really endless. I'm feeling inspired by all the layers that are being revealed. It makes me think about my own cooking and the layers within food. Look at this. It's a sea star. What? They call these blood stars. No way. Look at that color. The tide's coming in, but I want to go look for some clams on the beach. we were just out there. It's surrounded by water now. It's like you've got to take a boat to get to where we were. What are All we looking right, for? So um, you just kind of start raking. When you see little bubbles like that, there might be something there. That's what happens. So you'll find cockles, little necks. Oh, oh whoa, oh, what's that? What's oh, that? We got, oh, got cool. a little neck. All right. Got some little necks, some oh, cockles, baby cockle. some okay. baby cockle. It's going to be tasty. But yeah, these are gonna be great for steaming. Okay. The little necks. I think we'll do some sort of uh, tom ka or some sort of steamed clam and mussel dish. Oh, I think could be amazing. fun. As we're headed back to the car, we find some beautiful looking sea beans, which I'd love to include in my dishes somehow. Give it a try. Kind of tastes like the ocean. Oh wow! It's like right. a 
salty pickle, almost. Exactly. Yeah. The details we saw today at the apiary and along the coast were astonishing. I can't wait to integrate all the flavors we found into a meal for Anand tomorrow. Almost there. I'm so excited for you to see the spot on the coast that yeah. I found. Awesome. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It's going to be great to be able to cook out on the beach. We're going to set up some live fire, do a little cookout. So while you're setting up, I'd love to create a little field studio, and I'll shoot some of the ingredients. I'll get some close-ups of the mussels in particular. They look really cool up close. I'd love to see that. All right, here we are. Wow, this is gorgeous. What a day, huh? It's beautiful. All right, let's grab some stuff from the trunk. All right. I'm going to get the kitchen started over on the beach. OK. And get the fire started. Awesome. One of the most exciting parts about photography is getting to see this pattern or detail that you didn't notice at first glance. You zoom in with the macro lens, and you take a picture. And it's that moment where you see something on the back of the camera that you never noticed before. All right, the fire's rolling. Whoa, what's awesome. happening here? here? Check this out. Look at this little muscle. I zoom way in here. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that crazy? I cook with mussels all the time, but I've never seen it like this before. Right? That's a barnacle. Uh-huh. <sighs> so cool. This is incredible work. This oh, thank you. Stunning. Well, are you ready to make some dinner with me? All right, that sounds great. Let's go. All right, here we are. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's pretty beautiful, right? Oh, wow. I hope Anand notices the details of the sea beans, kombu, all the ingredients that we've harvested together. I also really want to find a place for Dan and Judy's honey. I want it to tell a story. I want him to taste those flavors and be reminded of where we are. We're making a Szechuan chili butter oysters that are grilled oh. with a little bit of that honey that we picked up oh, earlier. Really? And we're also doing a tom ka. I can't believe it. <laughs> we'll start with these Szechuan chili butter wood fire grilled oysters with honey. We're going to cook them right on that fire. You want really high heat. OK. That's what's going to get them caramelized. It'll cook really quickly within oh a minute or so. God. Now we're cooking. Here we go. That's our appetizer number one. Wow. Let's see how it's nice and golden brown around the edges. Uh -huh. It was just bubbling. Cheers. Thanks so much, <laughs> Melissa. Mm. Mm. It's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Don't waste the liquor. So I'll be making you a tomka mussels and clams sort of tide pool inspired soup. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's go with the clams and the mussels. Could throw all that in. I'm also going to break up this lemongrass. This is also a key component. Okay to a tom oh, wow, okay. All right, let's throw some sake in. Wow. A little bit of stock, and then some coconut milk. Okay. Key ingredient to a tom ka. This cooks pretty quick, just right when they open. It's okay. catching it at that right moment. But the second they open, that's when we're going to pull this off the stove. All of these ingredients we gathered here, and it really is just concentrating down into this one pot. Couldn't get more local than this. Right? All right, I'm going to bring this over to the table, and we'll plate up over there. OK. As I'm layering this in, I, I want this to look like the tide pool. I want it to resemble the place that we went together. Basil, cilantro, sea beans that oh, we yeah, got yeah, together. Yeah. Uh -huh. And a big squeeze of lime. Oh, wow. That is our tomka. OK, I am so All the so shellfish excited. that we got together. <laughs> okay, so... Bring that over there. All right with some ice green tea. Ah, Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. This is I, <laughs> Nature's I <mean>. dining room. <laughs> right. It's not every day you get to do this with a professional chef and a beautiful place and delicious, beautiful looking food. Hopefully it will be a memorable moment for you as much as it is for me. Believe me, you've succeeded. <laughs> this is going to be, I'm going to remember this for a long time. Thank you. These moments are all about connection and 
food is something that brings everyone together. Being able to be here, like literally on the beach, eating together is such a special moment. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the adventures to the tide pools. <laughs> <laughs> to the tide pools. <laughs> to the tide pools. I came to the Olympic Peninsula looking for sweeping views along the vast coastline. What I discovered was the beauty in all the little things and how important it is to look closer, keep exploring, and take in the amazing details of the world around us.